Welcome to ancient Alexandria of the Ptolemaic period. The city of Alexandria was once among the greatest cities in the ancient Mediterranean world. Founded by Alexander the Great in 332 BCE, Alexandria sits at the western edge of the Nile River Delta and on the Mediterranean Sea, where it served as Egypt's principal seaport and major industrial center. Only Rome, which gained control of Egypt in 30 BCE, exceeded the city in size and wealth. Alexandria would continue to serve as Egypt's capital until it fell under Arab control in 641 CE. In this video, we will explore the city as it would have appeared during the Ptolemaic period. Arguably, the most famous feature of the city was the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built upon Pharos, a small island on the western edge of the Nile Delta. Pharos Island and the city of Alexandria were connected by a great causeway spanning more than 1,200 meters, or 3,937 feet, called the Heptastadion. Hepta meant seven, and a stadion was a Greek unit of measurement measuring approximately 180 meters, or 590 feet. The Heptastadion served as an aqueduct for the island and helped protect the city's ports from heavy wind and sea currents. Eventually, the entire structure would erode under layers of silt and soil. After crossing the Heptastadion, Roman texts point to the existence of a temple or shrine dedicated to Isis Feria, or Isis the Lighthouse Goddess. This temple would have been on Pharaoh's island and close to the lighthouse itself, and the goddess would have been depicted carrying a rudder and cornucopia, which were ancient symbols of luck for those at sea. Upon exiting the temple, it would have been a short walk to the lighthouse itself. Considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, construction began in the third century BCE under the reign of Ptolemy I, Soter. The building was completed about 15 years later, under the reign of his son, Ptolemy II, Philadelphos. Built mostly out of limestone and granite, the lighthouse was one of the tallest structures in antiquity, measuring about 110 meters, or 360 feet. The base structure was built out of three stone tiers in step formation. The second floor would have been an octagonal tower, and the top floor would have been a cylindrical tower. The interior would have been mostly storerooms and a ramp, allowing fuel to be easily transported to the upper floors. The lighthouse emitted a beam of light, most likely produced by a furnace, and was said to have been visible from 50 kilometers or 31 miles away. The lighthouse was repeatedly damaged by earthquakes and eventually completely destroyed in 1480 CE when the citadel of Cape Bay was built over it. The Great Library of Alexandria was one of the biggest and most important libraries in the ancient world. The library was built in the royal quarter as part of a larger research institution created by the Ptolemies called the Museon, named after the Nine Muses. Its main purpose was to show off the wealth of Egypt and for its contents to assist the pharaoh. Academic research was seen as a secondary goal. The exact layout of the library is still unknown. However, ancient sources tell us the library contained halls of shelves for the collection of papyrus scrolls, known as a bibliothecae, rooms for shared dining, meeting rooms, reading rooms, and gardens. A small part of the library was accidentally burned by Julius Caesar during his civil war in 48 BCE, but most of the library was destroyed later, in 297 CE, during Diocletian's sacking and burning of the city. The Serapeion of Alexandria was an ancient Greek temple built by Ptolemy III, who reigned from 246 to 222 BCE, and was dedicated to the god Serapis, a Greco-Roman deity who was the protector of Alexandria. This temple, built in the western part of the city on a hill, is sometimes referred to as the daughter of the Great Library of Alexandria. The interior and exterior of the structure featured multiple white marble colonnades. Ancient sources say the Serapeion was the largest, most exquisite, and most important of all the temples in the Greek quarter, with the most notable feature being Ptolemy III's Temple to Serapis, which held the cult statue of the god. 
The Serapeon had multiple entrances via corridors with rows of rooms attached. The greatest among them was the Grand Pylon, a two-tower gateway that served as the main entrance and exit to the enclosure. During the Ptolemaic period, the Serapeon most likely would have tried to unite ruling Greeks and indigenous Egyptians. It was eventually destroyed in 392 CE when Christians stormed the building in retaliation for pagan violence. The true location of the tomb of Alexander is still a mystery. After his death in Babylon, his body was initially buried in Memphis before being transferred to Alexandria. Eventually, Ptolemy IV placed Alexander's body in Alexandria's communal mausoleum called the Sema, meaning body in Greek. The Greek geographer Strabo wrote that within the complex lay the vault containing the shrine and alabaster sarcophagus of Alexander. The original sarcophagus would have been made of gold, but was plundered by Ptolemy IX. Many notable figures came to pay homage to Alexander, including Julius Caesar in 45 BCE. It was said that to finance her war with Octavian, Cleopatra removed gold from his tomb, and sadly, this was said to be only one of the many times his tomb was looted. The Ptolemaic royal palace was the official residence of the Ptolemaic pharaohs from 323 to 30 BCE. It was situated on the island of Antirodos, which was in use until the Severan dynasty when it sank in 365 CE due to a tsunami created by an earthquake off the island of Crete. The royal palace was home to a large port and several warehouses. The palace complex would have held a number of temples and other notable buildings, including the Caesarium, built in honor of Julius Caesar. According to Strabo, the entrance would have faced the harbor to make it easier to view as the ship sailed in. This structure was thought to feature porticos, propylaea or gateways, libraries, banqueting halls, courts, and groves that were all richly decorated in gold and silver. Unfortunately, nothing of the temple and its structures survives, apart from descriptions from ancient authors. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of ancient Alexandria's most famous sites.